Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. For anyone who is um, joining us, this is our first FaceTime uh, Facebook Live. So um, we have Dave West, and this is a series we're doing of getting to know Dave West, and we're going to ask um, a few questions um, um, about your recent body of work that is online at the moment. It, it finishes on Sunday, but we'll be doing a weekly series um so how do you uh how are you is this your first time on an online <laughs> interview tape? absolutely absolutely i've never done anything like this remotely like this um i've, I've always been quite slow to um embrace <laughs> embrace the internet um <laughs> things like this um and now it just it's just the right time things have changed you know um and we've done a few things or a few Skype calls, but nothing as as, as sort of um, as uh, adventurous as this. So yeah, absolutely, all completely new to me. <laughs> what about you guys? Have you done something like this before? No, this is our first. So no. everyone, bear, with, bear no. with us with any mistakes. <laughs> 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 You're our first one. <laughs> so tell us a bit about the yeah. exhibition that we have currently running. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> it's an exhibition of still life. Um, I work um, usually through a few different uh, mediums and a few different styles and genres. So I do landscape and still life mainly in pastel and oil. These are all uh, still life paintings that um, I've done since the beginning of this year. So they kind of um, cover over the period from sort of Christmas up to the start of um, you know, the COVID-19 crisis. And then um, a good few of them have, de have been done since uh, since it started as well. So, um, yeah, it's been, um, it's been a big time of change. Um, so it's been a time of change, obviously, out there in the world. All sorts of things happened, um, but also in the studio. So I wasn't really planning on doing still life at the moment. It's something I'd, I'd often be out doing plein air at the mm -hmm. moment. But um, yeah, I was forced down there. So um, yeah, I was. I'm delighted. Uh, you know, things things happened. Um, things developed. So new subjects came up. Um, the style I was working on. So the style developed. Um, and yeah, it's been um, it's been a good time. So it was a good time to put together a, an exhibition of of those sort of fifteen works. Um, yeah, I suppose yeah. it's important. Yeah as well that the gallery works three years in advance so we would always um have dates especially where dave was working towards the our show in uh london and new york so um we just thought as a nice distraction that it'd be to show people um a little preview of the work and hopefully we will get to those shows one day so <laughs> yeah uh, i was quite excited to see the new body of work as well yeah yeah thanks I okay i've got a, I've got a, I've got a, a question there for you yeah yeah we have one up an early an early person <laughs> hi lorraine um so we start a few minutes earlier than scheduled but um yeah the trains are they sentimental or do i just like the shapes i'd say um a bit of both actually um there's a real there's a real story to the trains um i started painting them let's see over probably no 10 13 years ago 13 years ago um because somebody sent me a photo a few days ago of one that they bought 13 years ago um so they were it was a gift i think given to my when my son was born he's 14 now so he must, must have just been born and um i would make up a train set for him every single morning so he he'd, he'd come down he'd pester me to build a new you know um a new track every morning. He never really played much with them, <laughs> but he wanted a new train track every morning. So it's just something I, I got to know. And, and you know, I, yeah, they are quite sentimental. Um, and they've just been with me for so long now. They've been there for 13 years. So it's kind of a way for me to um, track my style and development as an artist. So every, I'd say every two years, I go back and paint them again and 
they're knocking around my studio, so they get all beaten up and all sorts of you know solvents and things fall all over them. So they get really weathered, and I love that fact that they're getting they're getting weathered. Um, and also, uh, yeah, I just uh, I just love shapes as well. Um, so I love the color, the saturated colors, how they've changed. And then every time I go back and paint them every couple of years, my style seems to have changed. So yeah, it's been, a, it's a really interesting kind of way of charting my my development, I think. And I, I'll probably carry on doing it. Um, I think it's something I'll, I'll, I'll hang on to them and maybe every couple of years I, I'll just keep painting them. And in the end, they'll just be, all the paint will have fallen off. Uh, <laughs> So there's that. I suppose there's that technical element as well that I really like of of um, you know with still life. It's about sort of trying to um, replicate the surface of things or the patina, you know, or the weathering. So when you got the paint falling out, often you got the wood showing through. That's really interesting to a still life painter. Just the challenge of being able to to tackle that difficult little illusion. So. <laughs> yeah, the paintings. Yeah, the the trains. The trains have been there with me for a while, and I think they'll um, they they'll stay there for a good while. So absolutely, yes, they do have sentimental value, and I do just like the shapes as well. Um, and I'll just mention one other thing, actually, the one in the show, um, train wreck. Uh, that that's a new one. I'd often sort of line them up. And then I thought, well, look, I've done that. I'm a bit bored of that. What will I do now? And then I think I just moved and the magnets all stuck together. And I thought, oh, that is really cool, <laughs> you know, with them all sort of bunched up together. And then the idea of a train crash came to me. And I just thought that that that's perfect. You know, there's a little bit of humor in it as well. Hey, so can I ask yeah, you about, that's the story of the trains. Sorry, Denise? Do you have a preference of um, plein air and, you know, the toys? Like, what do you, what do you prefer painting or does it matter? Um, I like doing both. Um, I'd, I suppose I, I always love a challenge and, um, I do get, I am quite impatient and I get, mm -hmm. I get bored quite easily. So I always find that I need to, um, I need to keep, keep moving, keep tackling new subjects and new things. So it really works for me having two or three different kind of, genres or subjects to work on so still lives so i'll get into them for a while and there's always a bit of learning when you're going back to it you know if you haven't done it for a while so i'll really get into it for a couple of months like i have done um since christmas and then you know certainly towards the spring i'd want to be getting out um so the plain air comes in then and i just love doing both and i think it keeps it keeps um it keeps me on my toes <laughs> it keeps the painting fresh. It keeps it interesting. Um, so I try not to flit too wildly around, you know, trying to jump at every new subject. But I do find it good to keep changing and developing and, and challenging myself, you know. And um, how are you finding isolation? I mean, is it, are you just getting out of the garden to do a bit of <laughs> 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 Yeah, are you trying to do the two? <laughs> or <laughs> um, I I found the first ten days pretty tough. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit, I suppose, like everyone, I felt a bit um, shell shocked. So um, all of a sudden, you know, everything is closed. Um, so I was a bit, I was a bit lost. I think for about ten days, <laughs> and then. I think what, what um, perked me up was an artist friend uh, challenged me to do, you know, one of those Facebook things. So I did um, 10 paintings in 10 days. Mm. So I decided to do, um, I suppose, a la prima paintings, so one-off paintings, so one a day. I thought, oh, th this will be fun to do. So no other reason, no kind of commercial um, reason behind it. I wasn't going to sell them. I just thought, you know, it would be fun to just tackle something new. So I thought, well, look, I'm housebound. What about 10 paintings around the house? So I just thought, I love that sort of challenge, you know? So I just thought, why not just challenge myself to see if I can do 10, or get excited about doing 10 paintings just around my house. So out of the window, um, the attic, the stairs, things like that. And that kind of got me 
got me fired back up again, I think. Um, now, I know for some people, you know, this is a really difficult time. So there's a real kind of personal tragedy for a lot of people, you know, um, loved ones, um, older people in nursing homes that can't be visited, things like that, funerals that people can't get to. So, and for me, it's it's really just an inconvenience, you know. Yes, there's going to be difficulties down the road, but it's not a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And in terms of painting and art, basically I realised, well, nothing's really changed on a day-to-day -day le um, level. You know, my studio's at the bottom of the garden. All I need to do <laughs> is walk out, get down there, get on with it. There's, there's no reason not to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've... I think the same as, as most artists, you paint through every stage of your life. So every, you know, challenge, every difficulty, every celebration, everything that goes well, you know, when times are good, when you have an exhibition, you paint through all of them. Mm -hmm. So why is this any different? So it was just a matter of getting down there. Um, I've actually... I've actually enjoyed um, the last month. I've enjoyed the time. I've been able to learn new skills. I've been able to study, um, which is something I often just push, you know, push aside and just plow on with what you do. So what you regularly do. So I've been able to really, I suppose, challenge myself. Um, that's and that's right. what some yeah. of those still lives are me really trying to challenge myself. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 been it's been good and bad, um, but in terms of art, I haven't minded it too much. I haven't. It's been okay. And do you have a favorite painting from this collection? Um, <clears throat> I probably have a few I really like for different reasons. The um. The trains I love, because mm -hmm. um, I, I spoke about that earlier. I just love, I, I love the trains. They have sentimental value. Um, some of the others, the, the large pieces, I think I'm quite pleased with. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was part of that process of learning new skills, trying to push, uh, push myself. Um, and when you do that, you know, sort of tackling different fabrics and things like that that I've never really tackled before and how to integrate them into a still life. But mm -hmm. at the same time, not just being, you know, showy or not just doing it for the sake of it. Yeah. Um, trying to bring it in and seeing how it can work within the composition. So um, that, um, that I like, that I'm really happy with. And probably I think my favourite, the two ones I did last, I don't know if other artists are the same, but I always find my favourite painting is the last one I did <laughs> for about a couple of days. Then I'm <laughs> bored, and then I just move on to something new. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, the last two are, are my favourites, and that is the one of Rattling Island and the one of Victoria Sponge. Yeah, I love um, that. Yeah, yeah. And that was the Victoria Sponge one is very much, I suppose, come out of that this this lockdown this situation my daughter um has been doing a lot of baking so <laughs> it's lovely to see that. um i usually do a lot of cooking as well so all this stuff's really familiar to me and i you know i just like a lot of artists i just paint um paint what you I do paint what i see and what i do and what's what's around me so that one that one i i really liked i was trying out some new sort of techniques as well um new kind of lighting effects um, and again, there's some sentimental value to them. So the scales in there were given to me by my mother about 20 years ago. She passed away a couple of years ago. So there's a kind of a sentimental value there. And I love the way the brass on it is getting all beaten up, you know. So again, like the trains, it might, it might, it's something that might, you know, keep coming back, recurring themes, you know. You do that in your house, the cottages as well. You always pick kind of the runes of a, of a house as well, which I like, you know. The, yeah. Yeah, like the work. You seem to like the wreckage. <laughs> I do. I love a bit of decay. <laughs> I love a bit of decay. I love it. Yeah. No, it's something that um I've I've often been drawn to, and I mean the last show I did with the Doorway Gallery there, um, Diamonds and Rust, that was very much about that, you know. And yeah. I suppose the the twin kind of pillars of what I I work with in 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 painting, which is 
you know, the bright, saturated color, the, the pretty beautiful stuff, and then the decay as well. Um, and yeah, I love I love beating up stuff, and there's there's plenty of old <laughs> ruins in Ireland. You know, when you're out painting, there's loads of them. So it's really a um, really interesting place to work as well. And uh, uh, have, um, watching, uh, please ask questions, whatever you want yeah. today, well, within reason. <laughs> and yeah, I think yeah, there's a yeah, question yeah. there from Lorraine for you, Dave. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love you guys to ask questions. Um, yeah, I'm willing to answer anything like technical questions, even. Um, and I've got one here. So, when learning new skills, where or how do you do your research? Do you just practice till you hit a wall and then go online looking for answers? And who is the most <laughs> inspirational artist? Okay, right. Okay, so let's take that one at a time. Um, when learning skills, do you just practice till you hit a wall? Um, I think. I do a lot of, yeah, practice is really, really important. But I think I do a lot of kind of visualizing as well. So if I'm trying to think about a new technique, I think a big part of the the work or the, 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 the start of it is just visualizing it. So just going through that process in your head. Um, so yeah, actually, that that's true of of any sort of large paintings as well. Um, sometimes public art projects and things like that. I'm working on a mosaic. It's sort of churning around in the head for a long, long time, just trying to work it out um, visually, you know, kind of mentally in the head. So um, practice is definitely part of it. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So my most inspirational artist, living or dead, and that changes every week. Absolutely, every week. So um, just like with the paintings, when I say, you know, I get bored with one after a while, um, inspiration just changes all the time. And it's something I'm really quite conscious of because there's always that um, that uh, temptation as an artist to just get sort of consumed with another artist's work and flit towards it and it influences your own style too much and you're just sort of bouncing around all the time. Um, you know, kind of absorbing these influences and lurching in your style, you know. So I think it's important to keep your own style, mm. but Not still let influences come in. So um, recently, what am I looking at? Recently, I've got a book by the Wapping Group of Painters. So they paint along the River Thames in London. That just arrived the other day, so I'm going through that. And anyone who knows my work knows I love um, harbours. And, you know, we were talking about decay there a minute ago. So harbours, boats and decay. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, and that'll be a big influence, I know. Uh, last week I went through some work by Isaac Levitan, the um, Russian-American uh, Impressionist, and I mean, every painting I look at of his is just, um, you know, just sickeningly great. Um, I just There are some artists I just want to give up when I look at their work, and Levitan is one of those. Um, Last year, I know we had a Soraya show in um, in Dublin. I think it was in London as well before that. Um, that was a, a huge influence as well. Um, so just going there and just seeing that light, um, you know, very similar to Sargent in the way he paints with big fluid um, kind of blocks of paint. But the colour was just, just absolutely outstanding, you know, just mind-blowing. But then there's always that you, you want to absorb a little bit of that into your own style but then you don't want to lurch too far and just start painting like Soraya so there's always a balance to keep in mind um let's see I have a few more questions here Ian Fleming have you been practicing for this Facebook live no I haven't <laughs> this is the first time I'm <laughs> winging it I'm winging it and if you saw the um the techie <laughs> problems we had earlier <laughs> you <Yeah. know. laughs> you'd know <laughs> um, I've got a question from Adam DeVille do you ever paint of your old paintings I don't tend to um I know a lot of people do, and I have done it in the past. And I think especially with plain air, you can get some really, really beautiful results out of it. Um, so, you know, the texture you have going on underneath, and then you put your new paint on, and that texture shines through or influences the new painting, can, can be really, really effective in paintings. I certainly don't do it with still life because I tend to have, I tend to keep the paint much thinner 
uh, much more deliberate with the still life rather than the plein air where it's a little bit looser and rougher and throw a bit of impasto on. Um, so, yeah, it's not something I'm against. I've seen it in other people's works and it can work really well. In fact, I've seen some beautiful paintings where you literally see, you know, a third of a third of the old painting underneath. Um, I have a good friend, uh, Thomas Bretzing, and he um, he layers up paintings over years and years and years. Uh, and that's a really fascinating process. But at the moment, it's not something that I'm um, th that I actively do at the moment. I've had a few bad um, I've had a few bad results where the texture of the painting underneath has kind of um, had a detrimental effect on on the sort of surface layer. Um, so yeah, not something I'm doing at the moment. Just on that, Dave, um, yeah. I noticed with the recent collection, you have some paintings on canvas and some are on board. So yeah. how do you just decide is that just whatever you're in the moment is it or how do you decide no there's there's a method to it there is a method to it so a lot of it is to do with scale so with still lives because the small objects are so they, they need to be precise in order that they read visually um otherwise you know it's a bit like um it's a bit like driving over a bumpy track, you know. Um, it's so lumpy, you just you can't really see the painting that you're trying to create. Mm -hmm. So I tend to use a fairly smooth surface for any of the smaller, very precise work. So uh, things like the trains are done on MDF panel, which I prime and then I paint on top of. I tone, I tone it as well and then paint on top. And then when you get through to the larger pieces, I find... If I'm working on a board, it gets really heavy. Mm. And also, there's not enough texture there to grip the paint. So it ends up being a large painting made up of kind of masses of tiny details. So it just doesn't suit. The style doesn't, or the way I paint the process, doesn't really translate from small to large pieces using the same background. So as I go up in size with painting, the texture of the canvas will go up. So that's why some are on board, some are on panel, some are on canvas. And the MDF gets massively heavy when you get to four by eight sheets. So that's really, you know. In the gallery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I have another question here from Deirdre. Hi, Deirdre. Uh, I noticed a lot of your still life works have a blue background is that color significant with regards to the overall color context and composition okay right um <clears throat> i go through phases of background colors um so i also go through phases of painting style um you'll see it even in the 15 piece 14 or 15 pieces in the show at the moment um some of them are much more colorful and some of them are more muted in tone. So they're kind of the two um, kind of boundaries that I, I work between. And I love both. I love bright saturated color and I really, really love muted kind of understated color as well. And like in terms of landscape, it's the difference between, you know, Soraya with those fabulous colors of Spain and people like, you know, the Hague school painters or the Barbizon painters where they're really sort of muted, a lot of sort of grayish greens, things like that. Um, but all of them have beautiful, beautiful, um, you know, effects. So the background, yeah, it really does matter. So when it comes to something like the trains, if I'm trying to get that saturated color to lift out, I might have a sort of grayed down background. The blue works really well for certain things, especially that sort of powdery, cobalty blue. And then for things like the larger pieces, you know, Victoria Sponge and the Rathlin Island painting, they just, um, they, it wouldn't have worked, I don't think, for me in blue. It would have just been too distracting. So it's something that I tend to, go for intuitively at some point in the painting um and yeah yeah it just depends really on the piece um just actually have a few down here so i'm gonna look through them i'll flick them up and see so there's one which has got the darker background on the uh the donuts from the show that has a red background 
So that was to do with the cloth that went underneath it. Um, the trains actually have a white background or a kind of pale cream. So, yeah, I suppose I hadn't really even thought about the background. Um, it, uh, it does change quite considerably, kind of red, yellow, um, blue. Uh, I think it's what feels right at the time. Can I ask you as well about your titles? I mean, uh, the train wreck has a, a funny side yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. Do you always yeah. like do you always like to think of something a bit more deeper or do you like to keep the title simple and funny and quirky? I've I've tended to always keep the titles totally kind of descriptive really because I always thought the the kind of the poetry should be in the work not necessarily in the title. But I'm sort of changing my mind recently on that. And, um, and you know, I was reading something about that. I'm not sure who it was recently. And they were saying that the title has really has a big influence on how somebody yeah. reads the work. It gives them an insight into your frame of mind. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm changing slightly, you know. Uh, so I have to agree on that because the buyer then feels they can connect with the artist. Yeah, 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 I think so. But I mean, you know, something like, say, the Victoria Sponge painting, I'm not sure I'd, I'd give it, I'd elaborate on that title because no. that's what it is. That's exactly <laughs> what, that is the story. So if it's about a narrative and a story, that is the story. Um, you give me one second. My dog is scratching at the door. I'm going to let him <laughs> He usually sleeps for about 23 hours a day. He's taken this uh, moment to, to uh, go out. He knows. <laughs> so, um, yeah, title, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think um, I'm sort of starting to maybe think about the title a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure how far I'll ever, far I'll ever push that idea, but... Um, yeah, it's something I'm thinking about at the moment. Um, a couple of other questions, Joe. Is your colour palette influenced by your frame of mind? Ooh. 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 Has your yeah. frame changed a lot over the years, actually? <laughs> um, I, think, I, think it, I think it does, actually. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think, you know, we, we live in... We live in a in a world, you know, obviously that changes all the time. And every other aspect of your of our lives is influenced by, you know, mood and weather, weather especially, you know, and what's going on. So yeah, I think so. I think definitely uh I'm thinking about the last two still life pieces that were done under this under the COVID nineteen lockdown, which is the Victoria Sponge and the Rathlin Still Life. Mm -hmm. um, definitely they've moved to the more muted palette so even though there might be a brighter element in there so still one or two saturated colors by and large they're they're muted definitely um, and then let's see a couple of months ago was it was a couple of months ago I did the brighter ones which would have been the blue still life and that's something that was on my mind for a long time so mm. may well have been, you know, when the the germ of the idea was set in, yeah, that might have been my frame of mind then, not mm -hmm. necessarily when I paint it. And then things like the cakes, the still the cake still life, um, that was just, yeah, that was that was um, a riot of color. That one, so it was all about, you know, yeah, that that was a bit crazy. I I think it probably does, but I'm not um, I'm not particularly aware of. You know myself feeling you know jolly and happy one day printing pretty colors and feeling a bit more you know somber the next day they're, they're both sides of painting that i just i love working on i mean i like i said just a few minutes ago i equally love the painting of um soraya and you know people like the hague school painters um or even van gogh's early work you know actually he's a good example isn't he so if you look at his early work very very somber and then later on he, he changes his environment and he goes to the sun and out come the colours. Right, let me see, I have uh, I've a load of questions here. Let's get through with them. Okay, Catherine, hi, Catherine. Using and displaying fabric is new in your work. How did you find that? Was it very challenging to get the folds and patterns right? Okay, that's, that's a good question. 
Um, it's definitely something new, and it's something that I'd planned to tackle at some stage. And there's all these, um, you know, still life is about, a lot of still life painting is about gaining skills and tackling those difficult subjects. Um, and I think that's what challenges artists. But um, it's about uh, integrating them into your work and not just doing it for show. Um, so drapery and fabric was something that I put off for a long, long time. Um, I always knew I'd tackle it someday. Um, so, yeah, at the time was a couple of months ago. Did I find it difficult? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, it is difficult. Um, but, you no, know, that's, that's the, the thing about a painting challenge, you know, it's a problem to be solved, and that's what keeps it interesting for me as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. Doing the same thing over and over again, no, that's not for me at all. I, I just constantly want to be sort of pushing and um, developing and changing, but not just for the sake of it, you know, to incorporate it into the work. Um, the one of the sort of the Damask, um, uh, the Damask um, fabric was actually a bit of an accident. Um, so I started painting it. Suddenly I found a sort of a method that worked, uh, which was different to how I, I usually paint. So it wasn't sort of very precise brushwork. It was big, thick in pasto. It's like, oh, okay, just following the light pattern works. Um, so that was that was quite exciting for me. Um, but yeah, it is a challenge. It is a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, what inspires your themes? Lego sweets, etc. <laughs> right, what inspires me? Um, well, right at the start, we talked about um, we spoke about uh, the chains and the sort of a sentimental aspect to them. I would say most of the painting that I do has some kind of sort of personal connection, some narrative to it, um, most of it. Uh, even the landscapes, so I'm out in the landscape, I always try and connect with it um, in a way. So still life's definitely there's some connection. So the trains have been around for 13 years, as I said. Um, they were my children's. And some of them are objects from my childhood. Some of them are things I've collected. Um, I just love those little bright, shiny things. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> I just love them. So I I, I do have a terrible sweet tooth. Um, and I love sweets. I don't actually eat that many of them, but I love them. Um, and I just think they're all beautiful, like little jewels, you know. So to me, there's not that much difference between, say, painting, doing a painting of Smarties or doing a painting of, um, you know, beach glass. So mm -hmm. bits of glass that I picked up off the beach. And um, sort of speaking about that sort of personal narrative, so um, the Rathlin's still life. I went to visit um, Rathlin Island, part of a bigger project I'm doing, um, and, you know, on islands. And it was just stuff I collected along the beach. Um, I just thought, you know, that'll make a really nice addition to the show, which is coming up in two years, by the way, in the doorway gallery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it was just a matter of um, collecting those pieces um, and arranging them. And let's see some of the others. I spoke about the Victoria Sponge, so that has a personal kind of, you know, story behind it. Uh, yeah, they all have, have some story behind them, definitely. And can yeah. I ask you, Dave, you know that I yeah. remember the big painting you did of donuts and it was... Oh, yeah, 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 the donuts, yeah. Do you just, do you actually set up all those donuts and take a picture? Or no, no. how do you, you leave them there and paint? So all the still lives are done from life. Mm -hmm. um, I feel quite strongly about that. Yeah. Because uh, what yeah. you, I'm just seeing more and more uh, as I work. As I as I go on, that what we see, what you see from direct observation, doesn't translate in photographs. It just does not work. And the more I paint, the more I realize um, the conflicts between the two. That's not to say I never use photographs. I do for larger studio landscapes. Um, I try and combine them with drawings and things. It's just a necessary thing. I just you know, I can't go out there and paint a large landscape painting. Um, from life in Ireland, 
with the weather changing every three hours. Um, but when it comes to still life, no, I, I definitely it's all done from life. Um, yeah, yeah, and I feel like I feel quite strongly about that. Yeah. So, are there any others? Let's see. Okay, would I, would I paint a custard cream? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Have you? Um, Cream, yeah, yeah, I think I have. I think I have yeah, actually. I did a painting of, of biscuits at one stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Denise. Just going back to that question about the donuts. Yeah. So mm. I would set them up, and um, obviously they go a bit rotten after a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm always trying to find um, solutions to these sort of problems. So what I'll do is set up. I would set up maybe a cluster and paint those. Then go off, get some more, bring them out, and set uh, up. Okay. So yeah, you, so you can sort of yeah, do it. You haven't done rotten like you love decay. So how come you haven't done the rotten yeah. donuts? <laughs> it's there. Uh, I'm not sure there's a big market for rotten donuts, but you know, um, certainly, uh, certainly, it's something I thought about. Um, you know, and there's all these paintings just filed away in the head. You know, um, and this lockdown's been good for that because. Yeah. Um, I've tackled a good few subjects that um, you wanted to, that I wanted to, and I just sort of left them, left them away there at the back of the mind, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah, okay, a few more. Um, have I, Martin? Hi, Martin. Have you considered producing any paintings of the figure? Okay, um, <clears throat> that's something that. I did a lot of drawing. I know you mentioned it there in your question. I've done a lot of figure drawing, life drawing, and I never really made that leap into painting of the figure. Again, it's one of those things that just, as I said a few minutes ago in the last question, it's there filed away um, for some future date. Uh, I've actually given myself the task this summer now, if we're still kind of lock in lockdown, and we pretty much will be, it looks like, not lockdown, but we'll be confined to our homes for a good bit. I'm I'm definitely tackling um, portraiture in pastel oh, wow. um, for the next couple of months. So it's not something that I've actively avoided. It's just um, still life and landscape at the moment um, are what I love doing. So certainly something I'll I'll tackle in the future. A challenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, Gwen. Hi, Gwen. That's my sister. Of all the paintings you've done, which one were you the most... Okay, there's a typo there, I think. I think she said she means which one were you most pleased with. Oh, boy. Of all the paintings you've done. I have no idea. I have no are idea. Are the ones that you put forward for the academies and your shows? Are they the ones that you say, right, that's a, that's a really good one. I'm going to put that forward for the prize. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. I definitely keep keep the good ones or what not the good one what i consider to be the best ones they're all good no um, I, I, the best ones um, and well you know sometimes the strange thing is the ones you think that are the best um, um other people don't think so and that, that came home to me very very recently where i submitted what i thought was one of the best pieces i'd done in um in a long, long time for an academy show, and it wasn't selected. So um, that was, um, yeah, that was interesting <laughs> to me. Uh, so you know, um, what am I pleased with? I think the ones there are some that have personal meaning. So maybe things like you know the view out my bedroom window, things like that. <laughs> um, those ones I do feel, you know, something for. Mm -hmm. I'm very much, you know, once I've painted something, I just park it and move on. Um, I'm done with them for yourself, for your own I'm house. I'm done with them, yeah. <laughs> time to move on. Sorry? Like the painting behind you. Do you want to have a preference of keeping certain pieces for your own house? Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I try not to get... Um, too attached too attached to them i think it's just part of the process if you're mm -hmm. a working artist yeah. you have complete control over them while you're in while they're in your studio mm -hmm. and you put everything you have into them and then you just have yeah. to let them go mm -hmm. um, and it's i suppose i've been doing that process for so long yeah that um 
yeah, I'm just used to it. I just, you know, I get attached to them until they go out the studio door and then it's off on another journey somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> right, who else? Um, Lorraine, do you paint portraits and if not, not, why not? Okay, I think I just, um, I just answered that one there. Um, is there more of an emotional connection when devising still life scenes rather than when you work on landscapes? Does that add to your enjoyment of a painting? Okay. There is a difference. So, let's see. Landscape is more about, landscape is more about atmosphere, I think. So, the feeling that you get, I think there's sort of a balance between kind of a narrative, you know, a story to the piece, and then a feeling to the piece as well. And I would say neither landscape or still life is is kind of at the extremities of that, but certainly landscape is more about feeling for me. Um, and still life is a little more about concept. Um, not exclusively, but a little more so. So um, when I'm painting landscapes, I'm not really that interested in the place itself i'm more interested in when you put colors together um ranges of colors that sort of emotional feel you get of the landscape you know um that's what interests me about landscape and then with still lives <coughs> it's more about maybe the connection that the objects themselves have um and i think that's probably yeah, I think that's probably the difference for me. Yeah. Okay. Have we any more questions? You can type them up there. <laughs> have you enjoyed this, Dave? Or yeah, you... yeah, I have actually. I have actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's completely new. Um, completely oh, different for me. I really do, especially since it's new to us all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope everyone's uh, yeah, happy with uh, our first show with, uh, on, on the series, Getting to Know Dave West. Um, and hopefully we'll have another one, maybe towards uh, in a few weeks' time, you might come back again to chat about a different series of work. Maybe we'll have those portraits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, we've got one last question here. Um, were you drawing painting from a very young age and did you always know what was your line into the future, especially as you're self-taught? Okay, right. Um, I wasn't drawing and painting as a child and I have thought about, you know, what, you know, where it came from. And I'll be honest, this might surprise some people, but I think, um, <coughs> I think, art is for me is you know part creativity and it's part really analytical thinking as well so I, I don't really get that divide between arts and sciences i think it's i think it's both i think you need the analytical thinking and you need the creative streak as well um so actually i credit um a lot of it to playing lego actually um i was obsessed with lego when i was a child um, <laughs> And I just would spend hours and hours and hours and hours building things. And I really credit that with um, the kind of spatial thinking that I have. So being able to see shapes and objects, I really do. Um, you know, I had, um, I think the first time I knew I could draw, a family friend had given me a set of pencils and a sketchbook. For my birthday now i think it was i think it was about my 11th birthday but i remember sitting down drawing a castle and being kind of surprised that i could do this so <laughs> up until that point i didn't really have any inkling now i i do accept that i probably had some aptitude for it um certainly <laughs> certainly in school it was the only thing i was good at <laughs> by a long shot <laughs> meaning I was terrible at everything else. Um, 
But um, yeah, I don't really put a huge amount of store in um, in sort of talent. I think talent, as with any skill, you know, be it um, running or engineering or cooking, talent sort of might get you out of the starting blocks a little bit quicker, but everyone else will quickly overtake you through hard work. So mm. it really is just um, dedication to your craft and, and pushing and working at it. Mm -hmm. um, I have loads more questions here. Let's go. Are we okay to go through them? We keep yep. going, please. Yeah. Is that okay. Okay. Let me see. Oh, I've won for me, and I couldn't see half of it. Yeah. I've got from the show that you thought was. Ah, oh, sorry, Ian. I'm missing half the question. I can't answer that. Sorry. It's a shame. Um, as your teaching methods developed over the years, do you feel that has translated into your work? That's a really good question. Yeah, Ooh. really good. Um, uh yes yes the teachings had a big big influence i think i started teaching about 14 years ago 13 years ago in a place called the village art gallery in scaries um and i was asked first of all and i said no because i was terrified <laughs> uh, and then uh, i went back to him i think a few months later <coughs> i said oh sure look i'll give it a go um and I'm sorry, I apologise to anyone who was in my early classes because I don't <laughs> feel a clue, a clue what I was doing. <laughs> um, it has developed quite a lot over the years. And what it's done is I found that in order to show, teach people or to show other people um, techniques and processes, I really needed to analyse what I was doing myself. And what I found was when I was looking at a lot of instruction videos, maybe on the internet, what you find is um, the artist might go through the initial process <coughs> um, and it's quite easy to follow. And then they kind of get lost in this subconscious um, or the automatic act of painting and they just go off and paint it and you just do this to finish it off. And I was like, okay, well, there's a huge chunk of information <laughs> missing there. So what I had to do really was analyze what I did and what I was doing and break it down. And that was a real revelation for me. Um, and I think I started enjoying teaching at that stage. And it's quite a big part of what I do now. Um, mm. And it's a shame that uh, the classes at the moment have stopped, um, mm. but I do, I do um, enjoy teaching. I carry on teaching. I do classes for a few places around the place, um, a few art schools. I do the Schoolhouse for Art and down in Waterford at Art Form. Um, so I enjoy going off and doing work, you know, in other venues. I enjoy doing my own classes. I enjoy doing workshops. We have two plein air festivals in Ireland, and I'm um, the Dublin plein air and the Wexford um, Art in the Open. And I'm lucky that I been able to tutor at both of them and that's really 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 interesting to be teaching you know um at a sort of professional art event so it's been it's been a really it's been a really fascinating journey actually teaching for me and i think there is a there is sometimes a train of thought a school of thought out there that it actually detracts from your painting work or that you're giving your secrets away and i i i totally reject that mm -hmm. i don't think that's well. I, th I think what, when we had our solo show with you last year in the gallery, the amount of people yeah. that came in from your classes, and it was just all such positive. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. said you were just yeah. absolutely brilliant. And there's yeah. not many people that can say that, you know, because teaching is quite hard to do. Um, but I think with you, you mm. teach technique. You're not teaching your, your own style. Yeah, well, that's that's something I really um, I'm very conscious of. I mean, I, there's there's no there's absolutely no point in that, you know. Um, I think I I read something a, a, a few years ago which was really interesting. It said you you can't actually teach people anything. You can just encourage. You can just facilitate their own learning, yeah. <laughs> and that's so true. You know, I mean, um, that's all we can do. So let me see uh, how you find in preparing online courses. Yeah, so just on the the. Um, on the uh the tuition end of things so um obviously classes had to stop and then we've carried on doing um finishing off those courses online um which has been really really interesting development um 
I, as I said right at the start when I was talking to Denise, you know, I, I've always been a little slow to embrace, uh, you know, everything the internet has to offer. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's just the situation we're in now has just shown just how how we can adapt and how sort of powerful the internet can be. Mm -hmm. I don't think it can take over from face to face in terms of gallery openings, um, galleries and, you know, art schools. It, it doesn't. It, it it's not going to be able to take over, but it can certainly add. Um, it can certainly be another part of of the process, you know. Definitely. Um, and people say nice things. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Do we have any other last questions? I have another question, Dave. So when was your okay. when was your very first show? How many? You were saying you were teaching fourteen years. So when? Yeah. You were obviously painting before. So when did you launch yourself as an artist then? Okay. Um I I can tell you now, I put twenty odd years ago, I put a couple of pieces up in the gallery in Cork, and that was all that happened for about fifteen years, I think. Okay. Um so it was around two thousand well, I tell you exactly, it was two thousand and two. I started painting again and I'd had a long period of like sort of 10, 15 years where I'd only sporadically go back to painting. Mm -hmm. And then I think I was about 30 years old and I thought, you know what? Um, I'm good at painting. It's good for me. Um, I really do want to, you know, do something worthwhile. So I really committed myself to painting. <clears throat> there was, I would say about four really tough years where I was working full time and trying to get work into mm -hmm. galleries. My I first really exhibition, yeah. I was struggling to get the show, the first show, so I put it on myself. Um, <laughs> I put it on in just down the road from where I live in um, Ardgillen Castle. So I rented the room. Um, mm -hmm. I had my work. I put it up, <laughs> and I did it myself. That was 2004. Um, and I was amazed. Um, I, I sold some work, and um, I think we... I think I remember buying one of the, the very first flat screen TVs that came out. I think I blew <laughs> most of it on one. It cost a fortune back in 2004. Um, I think they were about 1,500 euro or something like that. So um, I blew most of it on that. But um, it was just the most incredible feeling that um, you could make work, not getting money, but you could make work and people wanted it and they were wanted it in their houses. And that was that was thrilling. You know, so yeah, it's been it's been it's been up and down, bumpy road since then. But um, I'm still exhibiting, and it's what I I love doing. So I love the I love that process of doing solo shows, doing group shows, um, just working for myself. Sometimes doing the plein air, I like to keep it interesting. So you know, I've got a fairly varied schedule. Um, let's see. Do you ever hit an energy or painting block and how do you tackle it? Hmm. <laughs> Honestly, this is gonna <laughs> this is this is gonna make you so angry. Uh, no, not now. Um have I done yes, big time in the past, yeah, massively so. Um it just I, I don't get them anymore, and that's just from I think being a working artist for the past, what is it now, nearly 20 years, um, I just got on with the work. I think I realised, I'm not trying to be smug about it, I think I realised early on that you, it doesn't work going out looking for inspiration or waiting for inspiration to come to you. You produce the work, some pieces are successful, some aren't, but if you just keep going, inspiration is almost a thing that you realize in hindsight. You know, <laughs> you look in the rear of your mirror and you realize, oh, yeah, that was inspired. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> um, I just I have I have a load of ideas back there in, in you know, stored away and I work through them. Do I ever have tough times? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but for me. I think actually. I'm I'm not very good when I'm not painting. I'm quite grumpy, and um, I'm I'm not great to live with. So um, 
I I tend not to go more than about three or four days without painting. My wife says, for God's sake, will you go back and do some painting, please? Chosen um, sketchbook. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, actually, Lorraine's just put up. Francis Bacon said the same inspiration is found in constant regular work. Absolutely. I think um, ideas flow. The more you do, the more the ideas flow. Um, and it just kind of snowballs. And when you sort of stop working, they, they dry up a bit. Um, I do take breaks sometimes, um, not often anymore, but sometimes I will I might, at the end of a show, I might stop for a month, just say, just almost force myself to stop. Just, um, just to kind of, I don't know, get the momentum built up again, I think. Okay. Thanks. Right. This brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Oh, out. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the studio now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Glass of wine now. <laughs> well deserved. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dave, and thanks to everyone who tuned in. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday with uh, Dan Henson. Hopefully, Dave, you can join us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dave. See ya.